Good morning. Good morning. Friends, welcome on this Lord's Day. Welcome to this worship service on the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. Welcome in the name of the living God to one and all. Prepare your hearts and your minds to worship the living God on this Lord's Day. Our call to worship again today is responsive and it was found inside the bulletin. Brothers and sisters, oh sing to the Lord a new song, for God does marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Glory to God and the and the for Friends, let us worship God. So all these prayers we 
make to you as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading for today comes from the Old Testament, from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5, or the first part of verse 5. Listen for what the Spirit might say to you. Listen to God's Word. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of all, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor is brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. May God bless the reading and hearing of this portion of his holy word. Jesus can make the world whole and bring the world peace 
peace by making men and women, one by one, right and whole. Now looking at this morning's text from, from Micah, Micah is a contemporary in the Old Testament of the prophet Isaiah. His prophetic work, his ministry, was in the 700s B.C. He prophesied prior to the destruction of the northern kingdom uh, in, in 722 and the exile of the, the southern kingdom in 587. He preached, he prophesied to both the northern kingdom of Israel, its capital Samaria, and the southern kingdom of Judah and its capital of Jerusalem. He was, he was the only prophet really in the Old Testament to do so. Most of them had missions, one to one or the other, to the northern or southern kingdom. Micah highlighted the mistreatment of the poor and the idol worship of God's people and called on both Judah and Israel, Jerusalem and Samaria, to turn to God to avert the judgment that was coming. And then Micah, in this very little book, also looks ahead to the Messiah who is to come. And that's where our passage finds us this morning. It was in the, the shadow of threat by foreign powers that Micah offered his prophetic ministry. And looking across the corridors of time, down through the ages, across centuries, he envisioned far ahead a peaceable ruler, a gentle king, one who would come to rule all of God's people, all humanity, by peace. Matthew roughly paraphrases the section of Micah in, in Matthew's Gospel and birth narrative, paraphrases this section of Micah as he explains that the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem is the fulfillment of Micah's prophecy. The one who will come, who will be born in Bethlehem, has his origins uh, from of old, from ancient of days, and eternity past. And he'll be a shepherd to his people, to his flock. And that people, those people, will live secure. His name, which is to say his influence and his impact, will be known and felt to the ends of the earth. And he, this shepherd king, will be characterized, marked, known by peace. As I say, this prophecy is offered in the shadow of a contest and conflict between kings and kingdoms, uh, in the shadow of invasion and annihilation. King David, Israel's archetypal king, was born himself in Bethlehem. What the prophet Micah is forecasting is that some 700 years in the future, a new ruler, a new king, would be born in Bethlehem, one who would be greater than David. Beyond God's judgment on God's people for their sin, there was in this one who was to come hope. As I say, his origin would be in eternity, and he would fulfill God's promises to Israel and to wider humanity, to us. He would watch over his people, and he would bring peace. At the close of his life, Jesus would be interrogated by Pilate, the, the representative of another king of Rome, Caesar. Pilate would urge on Jesus the question, are you the king of the Jews? And in his response to Pilate, Jesus accepted that kingship, but with a caveat, my kingdom is not of this world. If my followers, uh, if it were, my followers would fight to prevent my arrest. As it is, my kingdom is from another place. Jesus comes as the one who fulfills Micah's vision, who is a shepherd king, a peaceable king, a peaceable ruler, the Messiah, who steps out of eternity and into time onto the world stage and into our hearts and lives, whose rule and reign is marked not by violence or fighting or force, but by peace. And so Jesus arrives for us on Christmas Day in Bethlehem. He comes bringing peace, a peace of heart and mind rooted in trust. A trust is in a God who is faithful to his covenant promises to us. We can trust in the God whose word is sure and who promises to hold us, to secure us, to preserve us in life and in death alike. As the little girl discovered with her Time Magazine photo of the, the globe, our world can be put to right as men and women behind the world, the ones who make up this world's life, are day by day pieced back together and made whole by Christ's saving love. And the anthem which the choir will sing in just a moment, In the Bleak Midwinter, invites us to imagine and 
response, I think, to the gift of Christ to us, to his gospel of peace. The opening stanza has meteorological descriptives. Christ arriving in winter when earth stood hard as iron and water like stone. I also hear in that line beyond uh, the report on the weather, something suggestive, a reminder about the hardness of human hearts against him and apart from God's grace until God's provision of Jesus Christ is received, until those hearts are softened, until our hearts are softened and turn to Christ in saving faith. And so then our response, our response according to that old hymn, to the peaceable king, to the one whose gospel is peace, to the one who comes to reign in human life, to bring God's love and peace into the world, our response is to give him our trust, our faith, our confidence, and our heart. Friends, let us pray. Everlasting God, you gave your Son, even our Lord Jesus Christ, as the prophet who declares your truth, the priest who intercedes for us and atones for our sin, and the King who rules and reigns in our lives and in our world. May we, in this Advent season, exercise a hearty trust in his gospel of peace and entrust our lives now and for eternity to the shepherd king of Micah's prophecy. Amen. <laughs>
Almost complete our journey to this year's Christmas. Here receive this benediction from Philippians chapter 4. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. And so go in peace. Hallelujah.